everyone, today I'm going to talk with you about a really interesting topic. I actually had a lot of fun researching this, so thank you for asking for it. We're talking about compulsive lying or pathological lying. What is it and do we diagnose it? truth be told about pathological lying slash compulsive lying is that it's not diagnosable. I'm going to talk to you about some of the traits that people present with when they have this. The first being that a lot of those who struggle with compulsive lying or pathological lying tell, they call them stories instead of calling them lies. They tell these wondrous and imaginative stories. They're so wonderful and amazing, but they're always just within the level of probability. Meaning that as a person hearing them tell these stories, we can always say, well, I mean, it could have happened. It, it's possible. Therefore, leading them to getting away with it for longer periods of time. The second thing I want you to consider is that these stories that they tell are not due to delusions. And if you remember my schizophrenia videos I did ages ago, delusions are firmly held beliefs. And no matter how much evidence we come to the contrary, they will not let go of said belief slash delusion. And these stories that uh, pathological liars tell are not due to that. They don't believe these things are true. There has been some evidence to show that after they've told this story over and over and over and over, they start to believe themselves. But again, it's not a delusion. The third thing to consider is that upon confrontation, so if I know that someone is telling me a big string of stories and I'm like, I'm so sick of this, and I confront them, I'm like, listen, I know you're lying. I was with you that day, that didn't happen, this is bullshit, and I confront them head on, they will give in and they'll admit that they were lying. And I think that that is honestly what sets it apart from delusions and why it's not, uh, not a delusion, not based on a delusion, those with delusions don't believe that they're lying. They, they know in their delusion they're telling the truth. And so that is what kind of distinguishes this from that. The fourth trait, and I, this is another one of those, like just, this was so fascinating. The drive for those who struggle with pathological lying or compulsive lying isn't external. They don't get the drive to do it from outside sources. It's not like peer pressure. Like, oh, I need to fit in. I got to keep up with the Joneses. I got to do these things to, to be the coolest person. It's not like that. The drive actually comes from themselves internally. Them thinking that they aren't good enough. That what they're living, the life that they're leading is so boring. No one's going to want to talk to them. And so this will lead in, you can already probably see where this is going as to how I would treat it. But we'll get to that in a bit. The fifth and final thing to consider is that the stories these people tell or the lies that they tell always place them in a favorable light. They will always be playing like the hero role where they, you know, uh, overcome something and save someone or make something better or they know famous people um, or anything that would kind of make them look like better than they perceive themselves to be. What made researching this so interesting to me was that it used to be diagnosable. And so that brings up a lot of questions for myself, like, well, why was it diagnosed then and not now? Usually we see an increase in diagnoses, not the opposite. What happened? Why is this? The reason that they say they took it out of there is because excessive lying or pathological lying is a symptom of a lot of different diagnoses. And they didn't feel that having it on its own did it justice because many people with narcissistic personality disorder, and I'm looking at my notes, um, antisocial personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder also find themselves struggling with pathological lying. And so they felt that having it as its own diagnosis was really limiting to the whole picture of the patient and what they could really be struggling with. The other side thinking that it, it should be its own believe that it should because people who are pathological liars don't lie for the reasons that those with personality disorders lie. They lie because they honestly believe their life is just not interesting enough. That's it, period, end of story. Has nothing to do with, you know, gaining recognition or getting people to follow us or anything like that. It's only because they don't think their life is interesting. Something that as a clinician I'm always interested in finding out is where did it come from? Where's the root of the root of the root, the seed of the seed? Where did this start? Why do some people have eating disorders? Why, why did they start being depressed? Did something happen? Is it genetic? I always want to figure out as much as I can based on the information they give me where it came from. And they say, and I'm going to check, I'm looking at my notes. They say this could be something that you struggle with 
because you grew up in a very chaotic environment. Or if one of your family members has a mental health issue, it's left untreated, which leads to said chaotic environment, right? But overall, as always, we don't really know why. Put it in the comments if you yourself struggle with this or you know someone who does. Do you know where it came from or when it started? That would be really fascinating for me to learn from you and your experience because in the psychological community, we really don't know why yet. And what I usually do with my clients who are really struggling with lying is some CBT. I know that we talk about CBT a lot, cognitive behavioral therapy, and I would use the techniques in this because it helps change the behaviors, the behaviors being lying. And we need to figure out what thought process is that coming from is it, I'm so boring, so no one's gonna like me, then we might need to do some you know, negative thinking logs where we talk back to that voice, or is it, um, I need more attention or I need to get away with this so I have to lie, and then we need to work on those behaviors. And I honestly think that behavioral therapy, whether it's cognitive behavioral or just behavioral, could be very beneficial for someone struggling with this. But as always, there's a zillion ways to treat it. I just think the sooner we get help, as always, the better. And if you're new to my channel, click here to subscribe. And for more information on topics like this, click over here. And if you want to find me on other social media and see what I'm doing in the rest of my life, click over here. And I will see you next time.